Welcome to the West End Videos Newsletter. My name is Joe Piccolo, Assistant Editor of the West End Newsletter. Today's topic is going to be the Elizabeth Peabody House and its 90 years of service to the community of the West End and Somerville. Uh, it started over 90 years ago in the old West End and it served a, a great many functions for the former residents of the West End. Today it's going strong in Somerville, and uh, it, it has a, created a big impact on the people of Somerville. Our guests for today's show are Suzanne Palmer, director of the Elizabeth Peabody House, and James Campano, chairman of the Peabody House Alumni Association. Today we're going to be talking about the Peabody House and how it got started. Uh, Suzanne, maybe you could tell us on uh, how it got started many years ago. I, I understand it was started by a group of prominent Yankees. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, that? Yes, it was. Um, in um, 1896, a group of very prominent uh, Boston Brahmins, if you will, uh, decided that they would build a memorial to Elizabeth Palmer Peabody, who was uh, a very fascinating woman, who was a woman way ahead of her time. Um, first and foremost for the, the group of people was the fact that she had established the first kindergarten in the United States. And um, what this committee wanted to do was to uh, build a memorial to Elizabeth and to carry on the tradition that she had started and held so dear to her heart, and that was to continue with the kindergarten movement, uh, especially in the uh, Boston area. And people like um, Sam Elliott and uh, Boylston Beale and Lucy Wheelock of Wheelock College fame, and you know that uh, at the present time they're, they're forerunners in the early childhood development uh, uh, field. Uh, uh, Lelia Pingree, who was the first kindergarten teacher in uh, Boston. Uh, people like Mary Garland, uh, again, who was uh, a great contributor to the kindergarten movement. Uh, Reuben Kidner and um, people of that sort who gave of their time and money to uh, build the first Elizabeth Peabody House. That's great. Uh, next, uh, we'd like to talk about the, uh, today we hear a lot about the feminist movement, but around the turn of century, the, uh, the Elizabeth Peabody House was a sort of a pioneer in the feminist movement. Can you explain a little bit about that to us? Only because they're uh, back in those days, and I guess most of the social workers were women, I guess they still are today. And uh, the, uh, once the Elizabeth Peabody House uh, was established uh, as a kindergarten community, and soon, soon emerged many, many needs in the community, such as uh, uh, the need for adequate housing, um, the need for uh, uh, well baby clinics, and things of that sort. And what the Elizabeth Peabody House did was to establish um, Again, many, many first, one of many first was a well baby clinic uh, where they hired a nurse and had a doctor consultant on staff where they would give uh, milk to uh, the children of the families in the West End. As you may uh, know, coming from the West End, it was a, um, a, a neighborhood of many, many immigrants, uh, some, who, some of whom didn't know uh, what to do or how to raise a child properly for nutritional reasons or whatever. And many of them looked to the Elizabeth Peabody House for helping hand. Along with that, uh, the staff, they were, were instrumental uh, in uh, getting uh, milk pasteurized. Um, and also, um, they were the people who led the free lunch program. I mean, we look around today and we hear, well, baby clinic free lunch programs in the school. Uh, no one thinks that way back nine, over, you know, over 90 years ago, uh, the Elizabeth Peabody House had already started and implemented some of these programs. And in the, the early 1900s, they were distributing over 200 lunches a day mm. uh, to the children in the, in the school area there and uh, at two cents apiece. Um, along with that, there were many, many improvements that they tried to help the neighborhood with, such as victory gardens and things of that sort to help them to raise some of the foods that they would need. Oh, that's great, because we see a lot of that today. And Many people don't realize that this started uh, over 90 years ago, right in the West End, right at the Peabody House. So you have to remember, though, uh, Elizabeth Palmer Peabody herself was uh, a feminist before the war. I think even came into being. She was uh, a great historian, a lecturer. Uh, she was an abolitionist, a staunch abolitionist, and uh, she was uh, 
she rubbed elbows with the greats. Uh, she was the first woman book publisher in the city of Austin, uh, and perhaps at that time in the nation. I mean, it was totally unheard of to have a woman publisher. Um, her sister was married to Nathaniel Hawthorne, and uh, one of her other sisters was married to Harvest Mann, so she was in with all the great literary figures of her time, and they would rub elbows in their little bookstore. But um, beside that, um, she was uh, a, a great pioneer, uh, and I mentioned before the uh, kindergarten movement. When she was 64 years old, uh, she went to Germany to study under Froebel, who was the uh, founder of the kindergarten movement, and um, she, you know, adapted to his way mm -hmm. of, uh, of doing things and came back to this country and brought all of that expertise and, okay. and did travel all over the country proposing for education of children, early education of children. That's quite a story. Uh, the, uh, Suzanne, the Elizabeth Peabody House owns a, a, a beautiful parcel of land uh, camp called Camp Gannett up in Sharon, Mass, right on Lake Massapog. Uh, can you tell us, uh, there's an interesting story about the, uh, how they acquired this land many years ago. Can you give us a little idea of how that happened? Uh, in 1919, a parcel of land in Sharon was donated by uh, the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Gannett. Um, one of the main reasons um, that people were trying to get children of the city into the suburbs was there was a strong instances of tuberculosis. Um, and the people generously donated the land, which sits right on a uh, lakefront on uh, Lake Massapog and Sharon, to do just that, to get some of these city children out into the fresh air, you know, a couple of weeks at a time, and also to, also to have the uh, families have some ability to get out to a fresh air spot, you know, and enjoy a picnic or what have you. Um, it's interesting to note that one of the ancestors of the uh, Gannett family uh, fought in the Revolutionary War. Uh, back in the 1700s, uh, Deborah Simpson at the time um, was fighting in the Revolutionary War. I say she, and I, she was a she. It was a, a woman disguised as a man uh, to fight in the war. It was, uh, it was only until uh, at the point that she contacted typhoid fever, fever that she, they discovered she was a woman and gave her an honorable discharge. In uh, 1792, she was given a pension by the government, and at that time she was married to uh, a Gannett. Hmm. Uh, so she was a direct descendant of the family that donated the land to camp. That's great. Well, one of the, uh, one of the uh, many people, uh, the ways many people remember the Elizabeth uh, Peabody House was by its uh, theater or uh, playhouse. It was called uh, the uh, Peabody Playhouse. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where uh, the Child Street Playhouse first got its start right there at the Elizabeth Peabody House, and uh, uh, they had they had many, many, many shows and operettas that uh, attracted people from all over the state, not only the city of Boston and out of state too. And some of the uh, some of the uh, prominent people that started off at the Peabody House that gave rise to was uh, were people like uh, Ruth Roman, and uh, you hear a lot about uh, Jerry Colonna, and uh, our famous. The one we really uh, hear a lot about today is uh, Leonard Nimoy. Uh, first of all, I'll go to Jimmy. Jimmy, can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, the Playhouse? Well, the Playhouse was a full-size Playhouse, and a lot of the universities and theaters didn't have their own Playhouses, would come into the Peabody House and play there. It was a full-size theater, brass reels, balcony, uh, lodges, everything. It was beautiful. Matter of fact, I spent some time uh, on the, I was backstage on the Student Prince and a couple other productions, and I, my crowning achievement was uh, I played a drunken, drunken sailor in Mr. Roberts, a, a role I would later reprise in real life. Uh, <clears throat> and that's about all I did. But it was interesting, because an in inner city kid, to meet uh, at that time, you're talking about inner city, uh, to meet, we'll say, actors and that type of people, you know, we'll say the, the artistic community, you know, it was like, you know, uh, the tide, you know, the sand meeting the water, it was totally mm -hmm. different. And some of those uh, breakup parties I still remember today. It was really a lot of fun. At, uh, they were professional actors. They weren't, they weren't just people that picked up. Some of them were, okay, like the Mikado was, was amateurish, uh, taken, from, taken from people in the, uh, in the Peabody House. But uh, quite a few of them were professional or semi-professional. 
and uh, a lot of us got our first idea of the arts through the through the mm -hmm. through the playhouse. I remember setting gels and quite a few other things. Of course, that was quite a quite a way ago. And uh, the Peabody House today has a stage. I think it's performance place. It's yes. called performance place, and it's still in the in, tra in the tradition of the old Peabody House. They're still running, and hopefully someday the alumni is hoping to if they can get a, a group together that will be a you know a, as a we'll say a, a small acting group. Mm -hmm. You know, but we don't know if that'll work. We have to get the the, the players. Susan, can you tell us a little bit about the present uh, Peabody House Playhouse? Um, we're now into our um, fifth year of production at the uh, Peabody House. Um, we try to encourage uh, uh, new works, uh, uh, new producers, and new production teams uh, coming in. Um, but we like to keep some of the traditional uh, plays and things coming in, too. Um, this year we started a children's series, uh, and this Saturday we'll be uh, playing Rumpelstiltskin, a musical Rumpelstiltskin, and we brought in mime and uh, magic shows and things of that sort and have them on a Saturday afternoon. Um, another thing that we started this year was a teen production group. Um, we had uh, one production by the teens last, uh, two years ago, and this year we tried to expand that by having two productions, one in the fall and one in the spring, and we do have one coming up in April being given by the youth. Uh, we'd like to encourage um, people to come into the theater, you know, to, uh, to give them a form of expression. There are a lot of youth today who uh, don't know what they want or what they can do, and I think if we can, you know, uh, guide some of that energy into something useful like the theater that, uh, you know, we would be all the better for it. One of the things, Joe, that um, uh, people keep mentioning Leonard Nimoy all the time, but um, we had some other greats at the, at the uh, old Peabody House. We had Leonard Bernstein conducted there, and uh, so did Sarah Caldwell. Mm -hmm. She, she um, put together The Bodied Bride. We should mention them, all right, so, you're right. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of famous people that, mm -hmm. uh, as there were art uh, people, sculptors like Cyrus Dallin and people of that stature, and excellent. a lot of people that taught there that were very famous. That's excellent. Jerry Colonna and Ruth Roman also yeah. right. graced the stage. Yeah, we all know who they are. Uh, uh, next, the uh, the Peabody House was uh, was like uh, central to the West End community, and uh, one of the uh, functions that the, the Peabody House served to the people of the West End was its gymnasium. And uh, people used to hire it out for weddings and uh, other type of family functions. Do you still hear from uh, any of the people from the old West End who, who uh, used to use this, the uh, facilities for those functions? I hear from the mm -hmm. Alumni Association. Right. Uh, as you know, Joe, you've been to a couple of the meetings. We spent <laughs> 10 minutes on business and two hours on reminiscing. <laughs> but uh, it's really good to hear some of this because uh, it just keeps adding to the history of the house. And I think Jim can address that probably a little better than I. Sure. Well, you know, through the newsletter and uh, and uh, what a, and the alumni, we get together and, and we have quite a few things going, and quite a few people are interested in the alumni, and they also uh, they uh, send in memberships, but they don't show because a lot of them are old timers, and they're they're outside, you know, they're, they're quite away, and they really can't make the meetings and everything. But we we would like whoever is interested in, in the area. To, you know that we can make it to come to the alumni because it's fun and we uh, we enjoy rapping about old times and we also have certain things going there that that should be fun. Oh, that's great. Speaking of weddings, Joe, um, uh, it's, it's already brought it up. I I just got a request from a summer resident to uh, uh, to rent the camps. They'd like to have their wedding there. Oh wow! Their wedding ceremony, their reception, and and uh, what have you. And I also, about a month ago, received a request uh, to have someone would like the use of the, the, the uh, theater for their wedding reception. So, you know, we're getting back to, uh, back the, to old the old days, days I guess, Oh, wow. People are requesting uh, the use of the facilities for weddings. It's nice, though. We, had, we did have a christening and a birthday party, so we do have some of those community uh, events there. Great. Yeah. Another, uh, another uh, activity in the Peabody House was the, uh, the sport. Sports. It was noted for his sports. I know, uh, Jimmy, you remember uh, the basketball team. We oh, both sure. belonged to the, the Duke's basketball team. 
Did you kick Actually, touch? I think I was on the Cougars. Okay, I was on the Dukes, so yeah. we were rivals. <laughs> and they had there was there was a league in the PBDOs at that time, and you could play. And we played all year. We played against the West End House, which was another settlement house in the West End, and against the there were a couple other settlement houses that we played against the the Heat Christian Center and the Bullfinch. We would play all over. Uh, we weren't that good. The West End House actually was a better athletic organization than the PBDOs, but we, you know, it didn't hurt us from trying. We, we were pretty good for what we did. Plus there was track and different things. And there also was uh, a science room, a woodwork. We're going to get room. into that, sure, yeah. yeah. And it was, there, were, there was a lot of things going on at the Peabody House at that time. Uh, the Peabody House of that time was a little different than it is now. Now it's more of a service community. In those days, it was actually a settlement house, and, they, and you worked out, you played sports, okay, they had showers for after you, you know, you could take a shower after you, if you played basketball and everything. They had badminton leagues. There was all kinds of sports, and they had baseball, softball teams going at the same time. If it was there today, they would probably have a hockey team. In those days, hockey wasn't that big, so they, it wasn't, they really, it wasn't addressed. Uh, but uh, in addition sports, to the sports, 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 sports big part of your life. Right. In addition to the sports, uh, we didn't mention anything. The girls, uh, I know the girls used to go to the PB house quite often too, and they had uh, cooking classes and sewing classes and all kinds of arts and craft mm -hmm. classes. And uh, they also played basketball there too. So right. not to mention uh, sports. Right. right. And they were also cheerleaders. Uh, mm -hmm. How about the uh, Saturday night dances? Do you remember those, Jimmy? Oh. Uh, Friday night. Friday, I'm sorry, Friday, Friday night. Right. Some were Saturday. Some were Saturday. People, people would go to the gym. They'd decorate the gym. Okay. They'd, each social club would have their own uh, dance, and they'd go up and decorate the gym and put crepe paper all over the place, and balloons would sparkle on it and all that stuff. And then you'd get a disc jockey, and you'd, you'd make money for your particular social club, you know, for what you charged at the door. And you'd sell Cokes at the, you know, at up there too, and you'd make money off of that. It was an interesting time. Of course, it was the 50s, you know, and it was uh, the problems that we had then, you know, uh, nothing like the problems they have now. I don't know if you could do that today with, with in, that, in this environment, you know, have that type of dance and everything. I, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, I never remember any problems with any of these dances. Today, uh, they have to hire security and police, and, but uh, the dance contests were great, too. I remember the dance contests they used to have. They used to uh, the winner used to get out in the middle of the floor, and uh, it, it was great. Uh, another uh, uh, active activity of the Peabody House was uh, uh, the... What was well, today? Today the... the, uh, uh, the uh, today the activities are a little different. Aren't they doing a well, we have, we have some of the uh, the same. Uh, you have to realize that uh, the funding sources have gone in cycles. Uh, where one could get money for teen uh, juvenile delinquency prevention for teen programs, uh, you can't. You know, there's no none of that money around. Mm -hmm. um, before there wasn't much money around for daycare. Now that there's now there is quite a demand for it. Um, the majority of our programs. Uh, at the summer at the uh, summer location, still maintain the same kinds of uh, quality and uh, the same kind of themes that we had at the old Elizabeth Peabody House. For instance, uh, we handle a hundred children a day just in daycare. Um, we have a hundred and ten children a day at our day camps during the summer, which are in the city. Um, we, we we have our theater program, which plays to about ten thousand people a year. Um, we have productions every single Saturday, every single weekend, so we have a lot of people that come in. We have uh, a video program, as Jim was saying, things change, where, you know, hockey was not prevalent before, neither was television, but now it is. Um, we have mothers, you know, a woman's group, where they, you know, have arts and crafts and cooking and sewing, going back to all of those kinds of things. We have teen programs. Uh, we have children's activities. Um, so we have many, many kinds of programs that's similar to the ones that we had before, and we're ever adding on. Uh, this year, uh, we started the um, an infant and toddler teacher training program, uh, the first in the state, and the one of very few in the nation. But if you look back in the history of the Elizabeth Peabody House, what better place to have it? Where the exactly. first kindergarten teacher training program took place back in 1890. And, um, we are opening the first infant and toddler daycare center in Somerville. So you have repeated it this today. summer. Oh, great. So history is repeating itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to 
uh, keep up with the needs of the community and um, where we were totally involved in the community we still are to some extent and uh, I should say to a great extent um, Do you have a large membership with the PBL? Yeah. We, we have about we don't charge a membership per se but we do we do try to keep some good figures we have about 6,000 people if uh, we get some figures one day and if you were to have a turnstile at our door and just drop a, a coin in there every time somebody came in that turnstile was turned 40,000 times a year wow so that gives you some idea of the numbers of people coming in uh, children parents with children and uh, activity groups and what have you so it is a very very busy place and um, I have tried to build a larger network than we already had and have been very successful in building partnerships uh, with the City of Somerville, Department of Human Services, who are our partners in the Infant and Toddler Daycare Center mm -hmm. and the teacher training. Um, funding sources now, Joe, they like you to collaborate uh, and to work together so there's no redundancy exactly. and there's no, um, you know, wasting of uh, valuable uh, funding. Okay. To get back to the, uh, the, the Camp Gannett in Sharon, uh, back in the 50s it was a, a boys and girls camp, but today it serves a, a different function. First, I'd like to ask Jimmy uh, about the camp in the 50s. Can you tell us a little bit about the camp oh, in sure. the 50s? I spent, uh, I spent four or five years as a camper, a happy camper. Uh, and uh, in those days they had nine cabins of uh, nine, I believe it was nine campers in each cabin. And, you know, you'd go there, you'd swim, they'd have hikes to Duxbury from the camp and to different areas, you'd go all over, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a director, was Jim Baker, who we're going to see a tribute later on to, uh, on the clip to camp, on Camp Gannett. Uh, you'd go there and you'd have a good time, you'd camp out, you'd stay in your cabins, you'd swim. They used to play, at the end of the year, they had a tug of war and a capture the flag, big capture the flag contest that would culminate in whoever would, which section, in other words, they had two sections, whoever won would be the champ of the camp. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun up there. And it took you away from, if, if you don't know about the West End, it was uh, brick tenements all over. The, it was similar to the North Slope of Beacon Hill, all brick and concrete. There weren't many trees. Okay, so when you went to Camp Gannett, you got a lot of green grass and water and, you know, it was, and it was good. So you sort of got away from your own environment. And, and it was really good. But now it's a little different, I believe. Right, Suzanne? Mm -hmm. um, the camps ran into some hard times. Again, you know, funding, funding sources, uh, uh, lack of income, lack of money, whatever. Um, there was a time when it was a very active boys and girls camp. And I understand the boys never went mm -hmm. with the girls. They always went at separate times. Mm -hmm. I listening to the alumni, I can understand why. But uh, anyway, um, there was a period of time where the camps were leased out to uh, the old kitty camp, which is now Horizons for Youth. Um, that uh, did not work too well. What I've tried to do since I've been here is, again, to build some partnerships and to uh, increase the use of the camps. There was a, um, a group using the camp, the uh, East End House and the um, Cambridge Community Center, uh, have 125 children in a day camp and they bust them up every day take them home in the evening uh, i think they've been there for i think this may be their 11th or 12th year that they've been doing that and they are continuing and i certainly encourage them to continue that um, the city of summerville youth program i encourage them to come over to use our camps instead of the ones they were using oh, that's great and through some in-kind uh help that they give us and some um fees that they pay us. Again, we have a groups of anywhere from 25 to 40 children going, youth, uh, teen, older teenagers, younger teenagers, going to camp three days a week. So they're using it. The Peabody House runs a family camp, which is uh, somewhat of a new concept in camping. Um, we have a, a, a regularly scheduled program for them, and families go up, mother, father, children, um, and uh, they have a good time. Oh, that's great. We are, we are thinking about, you know, trying the girls' boys camps again. Uh, that may be another two or three years down the line, but we are thinking about it. Oh, okay. I, 
I, I see that happening. I, I think it'll be successful too, because there is a need for that today. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of inner city kids who, who need to get out to the country, and this is one one vehicle, one mm -hmm. way of doing this. Jimmy, how about the camp reunions? Can you tell us? Uh, uh, I, I've attended many, and they've been a great, great success. Uh, when do they start? And uh, well, this year the camp reunion will be Jan uh, June 25th, not January. Uh, June 25th, and uh, it's the last Sunday in June. And every year we have over 500 people up there. And this year we'll have a good time. You pay $10 a car. I believe it's still going to be $10 a car. And uh, you bring your own food and you sit around. And it's not just, it's, it's an alumni run event. But it's not just for, you know, the alumni doesn't stop at the West End. There, are, there should be. We don't have any right now from Somerville. Uh, anybody that's interested in from Somerville in joining the alumni is welcome too. But it, right now it's basically an older, you know, the old West End is, is running it. But, you know, if you could come up there, it's a beautiful camp. I think Joe Mackey was up there last year with his yes, kids and everything. Right. It was, yeah. Everybody that goes there has a good time. It's a lot of fun. It's just, just a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, the alumni group was started out of there. Suzanne came up one year, and she stopped, and we were talking, and she said she didn't have any people for, they had a 90th anniversary, and nobody, they didn't have anybody they could talk to from the old days. So that's when we started the alumni group. And the alumni group now, we're going to have an alumni room, right? Yeah. Starting April 3rd, there'll be an alumni room that people from, you know, from uh, either the Old West End and some of them, if they want to join the alumni, can come and use the room. I think it's going to be on Wednesdays from 1 to 5 and uh, 7 to 10. Mm -hmm. So anybody that just go in there, play cards, uh, uh, read newspapers, do whatever you want. It's just in a room, a room more or less to get around kibitz and talk and, you know, a little bit of nostalgia. It should be a lot of fun. Hmm. I think it will be. And another, another thing we, we forgot to mention is not only uh, is the camp serving the, the younger people, but at our alumni uh, uh, get-togethers, we serve the elderly, too. Uh, can you tell us? Oh, sure. We, uh, what we do is uh, we, we bus up the people from the Amy Lowell, uh, that's in Boston, and the Old West End. Where the Old West End is, is an apartment, uh, an old-age apartment complex, the Amy Lowell, and there's one in the Blackstone. Uh, the, city, the city of Boston supplies the buses to us, and we take up the elderly and uh, we bring them up to the camp and we feed them and they have a good day it reminds them you know the old days when they were, when they were campers you know of course they've gone by that you know mark a long time ago but uh, they come up and they we feed them and they have a good time and we bring them up and bring them back great. we always have a good time i cook for them so i know it's, it's, right. it's great <laughs> yeah. we're coming near to the end of the show susan can you can you tell us uh, a little bit about the uh the present uh, capital improvements program you have going and uh the board has decided to accept the concept of a capital improvements um, campaign. You notice I word that carefully because we haven't started it yet. But um, we're talking about um, our second century fundraising campaign. Second century naturally meaning we're going to be going into our second century. And um, there'll be more on, on that issue as time progresses. Okay, so you are going to be raising Money we hope so. We'd, we'd like to raise money for, to, to renovate our facilities here on uh, Broadway to... Uh, okay, uh, we wish you success in that, and I, I know the people in Somerville will support you, you in, in that endeavor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're coming to the close of the show. I'd like to thank uh, my guests, James Campano and Suzanne Palmer, and uh, see you at the next West End video newsletter. Good night. <laughs>